Um, it's been a while since I've pointed the camera to my face. Yeah, a very long while. Uh, my shop's a bit of a mess because uh, I've been making another flower again and a lot of other projects as well. That's for elephants there. And that's the flower. I don't really know why I put myself through all this. <laughs> anyway, so today we're gonna be... Actually, it's not gonna be just one day. It's gonna be like half a year probably. Nah. Two weeks because math is only for two weeks. For two weeks, we're gonna be making a robotic arm. So starting with the linear actuator, I'm making the metal connector between the motor shaft and the threaded rod. And as you can see, this is a part from the sliding table saw attachment. Before that machining, let's see how well it actually fits. Hmm. Oh yeah, fits quite good. Pretty good. And set screw. Hmm, nice. Now turning the threaded rod, I'm just trying to knock out all the metal parts now since to me they are the most difficult parts. I am making a mark and finding a flat spot for the set screw. Now the outer casing and the lifting shaft of the linear actuator, which are made of aluminium. I'm also making some plugs out of wood and some UHMW plastic rings as they are going to be conditioned against friction for the linear actuator and I'm currently gluing them in using some weld bond glue. Once the glue has dried, I can continue machining it. For this part, I've had to reinforce the joints between the UMHW plastic and the aluminium by putting three tiny screws in since the glue couldn't withstand the force of the force of it. Didn't hit any of the screws. Awesome! Some of these shots were actually made quite late at night due to the tight time frame, as you can see from the poor lighting. Now I'm making the motor mount for the linear actuator. Okay, after a lot of struggle, <laughs> um, and by that I mean a lot, basically, is evolution from this, where I messed up the size, to this, where I forgot to drill out the 6mm hole, and when, and yeah, it just broke when I tried to redo it, to this, the almost perfect one, at least it's, it works. So I can finally move on. <sighs> With everything kind of fitting together, I'm going to start gluing them into their um, motor mounts so that I can actually work with them later. Yeah, there were some pretty late nights, but on the other hand, I got to see some pretty amazing sunsets. Now the linear actuator is more or less complete, it is time for the wooden part, back to my own realm. On the plans, I actually still haven't figured out how I'm going to uh, mount this gear onto the bottom motor. 
So I think what I'll do is use this little piece of metal off cut as kind of like a connector and draw a hole in here and then put that one through, jam it in so it doesn't turn and then have another screw here to secure it to the motor shaft. At least that's the plan. <laughs> This gear goes about here and as you can see I need to make a cutout on this board so the motor can fit underneath. I'll just roughly mark that with a pencil so it's about here and I need to push back a little bit further. And then with this nice little motor mount I can figure out where to actually put the gear. Alright, I really should figure you guys in. I've been staying quiet for quite a long time now uh, because like I've just been uh, in a hurry to get this done. Uh, this is the last day I have to get this done before my assignment is due, which is due in two days. So I still need like one day and a half to write the report up. But uh, the construction wise is pretty much done and the parts have all arrived over two weeks. So we'll get down to business. So what I am controlling the robotic arm with is this Arduino Uno? I can't remember. Uh, it doesn't matter anyway. It's an Arduino and with a um, ramp shield, I think. Pretty sure it is. Anyway, I just got it from eBay. They're pretty cheap. I think it was like $20 for like the whole thing with like end stops and uh, some wires. I did have some drama with it like I actually bought two of these because the first one I bought took about 30 days to arrive and then at first I thought that it wasn't going to make it in time. So I bought another one which had a quicker shipping and this one, the, the one that I bought first actually arrived first so it was kind of a waste of money but doesn't matter. It just means that if I blow up this one I still have another one to go with. Hopefully it's just like plug and play because I don't have a soldering machine so I can't really change the circuit very much. And then this is our power supply. Um, the stepper motors I'm using are 12 volts and 7.4 volts uh, but the power supply is 24 volts and that actually doesn't matter. Uh, the voltage just needs to be equal or higher. And actually, if it's high, it's better because uh, you get more torque out of it. Um, and the amps should be enough. It's about 3 amps, uh, the power supply. Whereas uh, the motor motors in total probably only require like 1.5 amps. So that should be all good. I guess the rest is just wiring all the cables together. And hopefully nothing goes wrong. Freaking Murphy. Just Jesus. Uh, now I am no electrician, so don't take any of this as uh, true. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're watching YouTube videos, you shouldn't take any YouTube videos for the truth, actually. <laughs> now, if I remember correctly, this one should be ground, uh, neutral, live, and then these are our positive and negative DC. So I'll just connect them according to memory. Hopefully my memory doesn't mess up. Alright, uh, time to plug it in and hopefully not blow it up. Oh yep, light lights up, so that's all good. Yep, 
24.1. Yeah, we're pretty spot on. Okay, turn this thing off before anyone dies. Um, if the voltage wasn't right, I could just turn this knob right here and that would adjust the volts. Uh, it's kind of ironic that I uh, put all the small motors at the end and all the small motors have the shortest wires of them all. Yeah, kind of sucks. So I have to extend these and I'm also planning to put one of these at the end so you can just plug into the uh, shield. Uh -huh. Now at that period I actually didn't have a soldering machine so the way I joined the wires together was to twist them together first then use some hot glue and then wrap it around with electrical tape. Uh, the hot glue will probably melt due to heat and high amperages so I do not do this at home. I only need to work once. Now installing all five of the motor controllables onto the shield. Uh, they have a really specific orientation so you really have to look out for it. Okay, we are back. Now, very long story, we are in my room. We moved from the workshop and this is about 10.30 at night. Look at the dedication here. Oh, personal engagement. I'm in pajamas. Don't panic. Well, I'm not gonna die. And don't say anything weird in the comments because I'm in pajamas. It's perfectly normal, I assure you. Bit of drama happened. So, you know how we had the 24 volt back? Oh yeah, by the way, I'm speaking so quietly because my family's asleep. So, this is a good opportunity to test my mic as well. You'll hear a lot of static noise because I'm whispering. Anyway, so, remember the 24 volt power supply? Yeah, luckily I didn't plug that in yet because that would have blew uh, the Arduino up. Um, even though the stepper motors could take the 24 volts, the Arduino can't. So don't do it, guys. Don't do it. So because of that, uh, where did it go? I went out and bought another one. Got the correct one, 12 volts. Ah, oh, Jesus. And then tonight's goal is to get this thing moving. I'm only connecting the power supply to this side of the board because only this side uh, controls the motors and the other pins actually control the heat bed because once again it's for a 3D printer I've got one of the motors connected I'm not sure which one it is it should be either this one or this one either way it doesn't matter hopefully I wired it correctly since I didn't have any code to test whether any electricity was getting to the stepper motors yet the only way to test this was to see whether the shafts could be turned easily as the stepper motor shafts are rigid when electricity is passing through. Now plugging in the rest of the motors. So once again, connect power supply and hope nothing blows up. And it doesn't seem like everything's going to blow up. This motor is still spinning, which isn't normal. Then I found that it was because it mounted that particular motor control board completely crooked, like half the legs were hanging off. And then here's just me struggling to try and make some code to induce some movement. The problem was that the setup I was using was for a 3D printer and so it needed G-code to run it. So logically I tried to find some software of some sort to try and write some G-code manually and send it to a control board. However, for some reason that was close to impossible as it was really uncommon to do. When I managed to find some dodgy software that could sort of write code manually, the control board simply didn't respond to the code that was sent to it at all. Anyway, I worked quite late into the night for it, but I still couldn't get it to work. It just was not going to move. Well, to find out how I finished this with the assignment due practically the next day, you will have to stick around for part two. Alright, good night.